Okay. We spent the whole season and we always hold up Plymouth as this example of this beautifully well-run club who's come up two promotions in the last few years. Um, we've seen Ipswich's financial results this week from last year in League One. So their promotion got even better, in my opinion, this week, their League One title last year. But they're in all kinds of trouble now, Sam. I I had them staying up and a lot of Plymouth fans went, oh, Ben, I know, I know you kind of like, like the story, but we don't agree with you with, with where this is going. Now, Ian Foster is gone with six games. And part of me thinks this is crazy um, because you shouldn't sack your manager with six games to go. Is that going to upset the apple cart? But if he's the wrong guy, then it's probably the right thing to do. But whichever way round, whether it's brave, stupid, both, um, they have to do something, don't they, Sam? And they're, they're banging trouble. What is your take on the, the whole picture at Argyle, especially changing a manager six games out? Yeah, I suppose a big factor is when the the atmosphere in the in the stadium and amongst the supporters has turned to a to an extent where it's it's probably affecting the players, um, and I think that's where we got to. And I don't like you know there was a bit of it with Mick Beal earlier on in the season, Ben, and I remember us discussing it then. You know, I don't like character assassinating. That's not you know our job, and I, I think to a degree that's that's become too much of a part of football. You know supporters picking on managers' mannerisms and, and what they like on the touchline and what they like post-match. It's a high-pressured situation. And absolutely, I probably didn't agree with with some of the manager's comments after games and, and some of his, his, his mannerisms and, and, and stuff like that. But, you know, essentially, um, I don't think you can you can be too hard on someone when you've never done the job yourself. I think is in essence what I'm trying to say, but the performances have have not been good. It sounded like at Carrow Road they actually started the game really well, and again against Bristol City. So these two games could have gone differently, and we could have been talking really differently about Plymouth Argyle this this, this morning. Obviously, when they scored early at, at Carrow Road, I was thinking, "Oh, my prediction is absolute nonsense." Um, and then they uh, conceded the two set pieces and. And obviously lost against Bristol City, but it feels like the toxicity got too strong um, w- within the supporters. And I think the change is probably the right decision. I'm surprised the way they've gone. Um, so it's Juice I am Nip, surprised. Who is the director of football, right? Yeah, and I think he he worked uh, in the the England setup somewhere along the line. So at the FA, sorry. So I think he was aware of Ian Foster. It's clear that he probably um, recommended him or, or made the appointment or was certainly involved in that appointment. So it's an interesting scenario that's that's played out. I saw them at Southampton um, when he was in interim charge and I saw them when they actually played quite a defensive kind of game plan. But if you look at the results of what, around that night at St Mary's, it was there was two three threes, there was a 2-2, two, two, it was more akin to what they've been under Stephen Schumacher. So it's probably with obviously an eye on that to make them more free scoring, make them more attack minded. Uh, But obviously the hierarchy will feel that this is a better opportunity of garnering points, which is the only thing that, that matters at the moment. And it's two voices the players are familiar with. Um, maybe they didn't fully agree or or have slightly different ideologies about how the game should be played in comparison to Ian Foster, who has been a little bit more conservative. I think that's fair. And in the statement that they've released today, Plymouth, um, they spoke of him being backed and being op- given the opportunity to bring a couple of coaches in and being backed in the transfer market in January where they did recruit, what, three or four players. Um, and clearly they haven't worked. And I think that's a big ingredient here, um, the lack of creative players that were brought in. And obviously the loss of Finn Azaz, I think, is is massive. You know, if you're talking about one of your your three best players, your, your greatest sources of creation and, and, and goal scoring from midfield, that affects any team <laughs> on top of losing the manager. So I think there's been, you know, 
a lot a lot of things going on at that club and you talk about chaos don't you and when you were mm. when you were discussing relegation candidates and I wouldn't put Argyle in that category because clearly it's really well run and they lost their manager because he's been good to Stoke City but I, I think that losing him and losing the Zaz has definitely left them in this predicament. And can I just throw in, I agree with all of your um, mitigating factors. The other one is this weird relegation um, battle yeah. we've had where teams have knocked out three and four wins in four games and Plymouth have been the one who've sort of just hovered. I think I looked, uh, someone will correct me in the in the chat, no doubt. I think it's something like 12 points from 14 games or something for Foster. So, yeah, we're looking at a point per game as a decent stand. He's just under it. But I think as well in the wrong time, wrong place uh, situation. I think I, I think I've read that maybe his points per game away from home was better than Schumacher this season. Right. And they have um, churned out a couple of wins. Swansea, Middlesbrough, yeah. I think, are the, the, yeah. the two that spring to mind. And Sam, after you know, they beat Middlesbrough, I think they got to 40 points. And I was like, oh, Plymouth for safe. Because we no one would expect them to go a run of five games at home without scoring. You think even right. against yeah. the, the best teams in the division, they, they'd score goals and put up a fight. So I think that's you know a big reason as to why they felt they had to act. Preston, they lost to at home, right? And then obviously Bristol City, which are two games on the face of it where you would have bet your bottom dollar that our guy would have got at least a point from one of those two games. So when that has happened and played out, I think that gets too strong. Add to that the 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 moans and groans, the stick that he's been getting, you know, rightly so. The results have been really poor. I think that's um that's the opportune moment for a board to act, and they have. And also, Sam, is an opportune moment um before you go and play Rotherham, who are pretty much nailed on to finish bottom. So it's Rotherham, we'll just look at the three game week, Rotherham away, QPR at home, which is becoming more and more difficult and then for god's sake look at that leicester so um it's i mean you'll tell me no football is much longer term than this but surely they've targeted that rather than going for a three-pointer and a quick bump haven't they yeah but i've no idea what type of game that's going to be i've no idea what kind of rather than turn up probably a probably a rather than the old cliche but they'll just play with freedom you know, he can pick whatever team he likes. They, they're gone, aren't they? I, I said on Saturday, they'll enjoy that victory. I'm sure that dressing room was quite a bubbly place because the reality is, you know, the players will know that they're going to be playing in League One next season. Um, and then me and it was Lee Catamar I was alongside at the weekend. And I spoke about some of those games against teams whose fate is already sealed could be the hardest games because they don't care. I've played in games against teams that are 12th and you get beat three or four nil because they just try things. There's no pressure. <laughs> it's like a carnival. You know, they're all booking their holidays. Um, and yeah, Rotherham mathematically aren't quite down yet, but I've no idea what that game will be. I, I, I have no idea. I had no idea. I think it'd probably be a difficult game for our goal for those reasons. Mm. Very, very interesting. Um, get your thoughts in. We'll definitely clip that one out and hopefully we can hear from the Plymouth fans. My sense is um, that they thought they were gone without doing this and it kind of kind of had to be done. But let us know what you think in the comments. Plymouth make a managerial change late, late, late in the day. 